Things like gold, experience, magic items. I mean, yes, we're there to save the realm, but this is why we're doing that D&D thing, right? That payoff at the end. You defeat the boss monster. You defeat the dragon. You, you get that gold. You get those magic items. I want to ask the question in this D&D vlog. Magic items just aren't for the players. And as a DM, how are you utilizing magic items in your game? I mean, turn around is okay. We see this, right? You see with certain um, boss monsters or certain maybe um, NPCs going against the party, they might have a plus two mace. They might have some magical armor. They might utilize potions. They're not just a stat block. I, I think in current D&D Modern, what I see more and more is monsters or encounters are just stat blocks. Not taking into the account to that they're there for a reason. They've interacted with a dungeon. They've built up an empire. There's a whole ecosystem that might involve some magic items. Um, it's not like this boss monster is just there hanging out a pile of treasure and some magic items, and it's, it's waiting for it to get stolen. Assuming there's sufficient intelligence and wisdom and understanding, because there's a lot of different encounters and monsters, they're going to utilize those things. So as a dungeon master, I regularly use magic items appropriate for the challenge rating, appropriate for the narrative against the players. And that's always interesting because not only does it highlight the power of that, that boss monster, that evil cleric that you're going to fight, you know, evil cleric, kind of dragon scale armor, a, a flaming heavy mace, that's got some bite, right? You're like, wow, that, that definitely builds up the narrative. But it's interesting because even uh, sometimes if I'll have – a monster or an encounter burning a wand. You know, it's interesting. Last game, the, the rogue was like, I want to do knowledge check. I'm like, okay, what, what kind of knowledge check? He's like, I don't know. Knowledge something. Just you tell me. Do I understand that wand? Because uh, the wizard they were fighting, right? They're talking back and forth. And uh, the wizard has a wand on him, right? On his belt. So the rogue is like, I want to figure out what kind of wand that is. And, and like, I already know where this is going because we have a lot of fun playing. So I'm like, okay, knowledge, ch check whatever knowledge. He passes, you know, DC 10 or 12, whatever. So he's like, okay, guys, this is a wand of lightning bolt. Every time that wizard utilizes that, that's like an 80 gold piece per shot charge. So we got to take care of this fast, right? You sometimes see things like that where the players try to figure out the magic gear that they have. So regularly I will do that. But what about monsters? And I'm not insulting monsters here. What about monsters' um, book value with less intelligence? I mean, I, I try to play the monsters, the encounters. I try to play them appropriate for their stat block. I try to take into account their intelligence and their wisdom and then the background they find themselves in and, and how – just what would they know, right? A low intelligence, low wisdom monster, they're going to snack on the closest player even if it's not the most – uh, tactically advantages player to go against. We're playing uh, against, say, a giant or a dragon that has, like, you know, intelligence 20. Well, I, I think as a DM, probably, like, I'm, like, intelligence maybe 13 tops. Uh, I, I could never play this dragon as cunning as it really is in, in the monster manual. So when we look at some of the monsters that have low intelligence, low wisdom, you'd say, well, I can't give them magic items. They're not going to know how to use it. Well, you know, look, this is D&D. &D. Not only can you do whatever you want, we can come up with a story for whatever you want. And, and two monsters. Slight spoiler here, but if you're playing in my current game, I'm, I'm not utilizing both of these monsters. They haven't been seen for a while. They will be seen again at some point. So no real spoilers here. Two monsters that I run. First would be um, a roper monster. This is a monster that's often found in caves or, or possibly dungeons. That's part of the scenery, part of the cave earthworks, camouflaged. And uh, then when players get close enough, it's got kind of like squid or octopus tentacles and it reaches out and it grabs you and it tries to pull you in and snack on you. So, and, and Roper is kind of an interesting encounter. It's, it's got a little bit of bite to it, right? So with that, the narrative is, you know, this roper has some low intelligence, some low wisdom. It picked a good spot to hang out because adventurers are apparently always going through this cave for some reason. 
and um, it's been pretty successful ambushing them and killing them. But it's also observed over time that certain characters, certain adventurers that wear robes and kind of have wizards love their funny hats. Not that they don't know what a wizard is, but it notices the fashion statement different than the humans that wear the full armor. And uh, they wave around these kind of weird wands. So a roper utilizing magic wands that it's liberated or obtained or found through defeating adventures. It has no idea what it does, but it knows if it swings it in a certain way, it blasts off a magic missile, a sleep spell, or a lightning bolt. So when I have played my roper armed with magic wands, it will randomly try to pop them off on the players. It'll, it'll sacrifice one of its number of attacks just to do that. It doesn't quite understand well, I'm not a wizard, so if I use this sleep wand against the party, it's not going to work because they're higher than five hit dice. No, it knows if it waves it a certain way, sometimes adventurers will fall asleep and then it can snack on them. So it'll try to utilize that. So that's, um, that's, that's one way to possibly build it into the narrative. Another one that I usually use is um, either with an owlbear or a hooked horror, sometimes a hooked horror. I think the hooked horror in terms of... Um, the popularity of this monster, I mean, back in the day, like, hooked horror was everywhere. You know, you knew if you were in, like, a classic dungeon, you are going to be fighting some of these. And at the lower levels, you know, level three, they, they hit pretty hard. They hit pretty hard. Armor class was solid. Hit points were solid. But the, the damage, I guess the hooks of the horror, and that's what made it so horrible, hit really, really hard. Um, especially if it's an older version of D&D where hit points weren't just given out like candy. So... With these hooks, um, I had actually had a hooked horror that was part of um, kind of the Wizards Council display piece. You know, wizards are always doing crazy things. They're responsible for most things in D&D. So in the campaign I was playing, your status was kind of capturing magical beasts and magical monsters and um, having them subdued to a point where you walked openly in the city with like your whole crew of like monsters and apprentices and, and the crazier the monster kind of the more status you had as a wizard, much better than wizards going back to back and trying to, cause there's always rivalry with wizards, right? Back to back, trying to blow people up, fireballs and lightning bolts. That that's bad for business in the city. It's, it's never going to work, but you can't tell uh, the city council can't be like, look, whizzies, we don't want you here. Take your towers and get out of here. You know, can't do that to a wizard. But if you start a trend and you shift the status, you could also possibly profit off that as a Thieves Guild member, or you could profit off that as an adventurer selling these. But how we get to the horror was um, one of the wizards had decked out this hooked horror with the hooks with magical rings. So when it attacked, you had a ring of the ram, which um, kind of gives you a little bit more punch. You had a ring that boosted up its armor class. You had a ring of spell storing that somehow would pop off some interesting spell effects. So having the rings on the hooks, that allowed me to use some out-of-the-ordinary spell effects. And, and I love doing this for, again, two reasons. One, the players that I've played with for a long time, um, they'll make a spot check or I'll describe the monster and they'll notice it. And right away they're thinking, wonder what kind of ring that is, wonder what kind of wand that is, wonder what kind of cape that is. Can I sell it? Can I keep it? Can I do whatever? But also, um, and, and we explored this in another vlog, out of character knowledge versus player knowledge, longtime D&D players, you start to describe a monster or read that entry. Or if I'm playing kind of um, traditional wargaming, I put down the miniature. It's WYSIWYG. They can't help it. You're like, okay, hooked har, hit points 48, armor class negative two, two attacks per attack, and they're going to do um, 1d10 plus this, treasure type this, number of appearing that, magic resistance this. It, it's natural. So you kind of adapt your tactics to face that, where I'm thinking as a DM, like, bro, you're a third-level fighter. Your, your character, your avatar on the table, there's a third-level fighter. You have no idea what this is. You've heard some stories you look through your monster book back at the keep, but like you've never faced this. You don't know what it is from that perspective to know it has magic resistance or not. So that's a way. And of course, you can always custom write your monsters. Nothing wrong with that. But that's a way to kind of jazz things up a little bit and have them 
um, interact, you know, that, that hooked horror, they don't notice it has the ring of the ram. It strikes the fighter. It hits the fighter. Fighter takes, you know, 1d10 damage. All right, I could absorb that. Um, but then takes another 1d8 from the blow, gets knocked back 30 feet and gets disarmed. They're like, Fritz, you can't do that. It's like, well, no, that's what happened. Check it out. Just happened, right? So it's a way to utilize magic items. Magic items are not just for the players. They're for the monsters also.